Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. We've decided to do this particular video, which you saw the thumbnail, which is called Watch This Video Before Visiting the Azores. For some of you that are watching this channel for the first time, I'm Carlos, Laura's in Canada. Our channel is called Our Journey on Pico Island. I am on Pico Island. We thought it would be good to just do a video for some of you especially never heard too much about the Azores, about these beautiful islands in the North Atlantic, I thought it would be good to just feed you some really good information uh, from our perspective, from where we are. And uh, one main reason why we have this channel is to share our experiences here on Pico Island and uh, when we visit other islands in the Azores, but also to give out a little bit of information based on what we're seeing and how we feel about these islands. San Miguel, Santa Maria, Terceira, Graciosa, Faial, Pico, São Jorge, Flores, Corte. Two hours from mainland Portugal, let's say Lisbon. You're about five to six hours from Toronto, like Canada. Four and a half to five and a half from Boston. Just to give you a little bit of an idea, this, this area of just ocean, these islands are basically by themselves, surrounded by a beautiful body of water called the Atlantic Ocean. And it's a sanctuary for a lot of the marine life that we see. The, this is why it's one of the top places for whale watching in the world. A variety of Cretaceans that come by here, like whales and dolphins, I think it's like nowhere else on the planet. So again, know where you're flying to, how long it takes, I think it's important before making that decision. And this is why I know these are very just basic points, but uh, take the time to, to know, because when you're looking for a flight, how am I gonna get there? Some people think it, it takes a long time to get here. It's not true. It's a quick, uh, I consider it anything, you, anywhere you can fly for, for less than eight hours, seven hours. The frequency of flights, the main airline is Azores Airlines, but it connects with other ones like TAP and from around Europe, other airlines, they're part of the code share. You know, like it's, it's a lot easier than what people think when they look on the map. I'm close to the Toronto airport. So the Toronto airport, basically the flight is overnight, leaves at about nine o'clock at night. Direct flight into the big island. Here in the Azores, it's St. Michael, São Miguel. You fly basically in there. This time we took us five hours to fly in there, okay? There's different connections. I had to come to another island, in my case, Pico Island. Uh, I arrived, let's say, about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. My flight left at 8.30, 9 o'clock. I was on Pico Island by 10 o'clock in the morning. Again, it depends on if you arrive uh, early and then your connector is more in the afternoon, obviously you're gonna get here later. But this is how easy it is. Now, from Lisbon, same thing. A lot of flights fly direct to San Miguel, to Tercera, to Fayal, and to Pico. I think those are the main islands where you have direct flights. Anything coming through Lisbon, you can come from Italy, from England, Germany, wherever, Canada, the States. You can, you can get into Lisbon if you can't come directly to San Miguel or to the Azores and just fly there. There are some delays sometimes. In my experience, in Laura's, 80% of the time, very smooth, and uh, we, we get here quickly. And on the way back, it's sort of the reverse. Like I'm leaving on Wednesday from here, for example. I'm gonna leave at about 2.15 from Pico, direct to San Miguel. I'll be there basically two, two and a half hours. I'll connect right away to Toronto. And I'll get into Toronto, six, seven, eight o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Why am I going there? What's there to do there? What's the reasoning behind my trip? And this is how I pick most of our, my trips or when we, Laura and I travel. Uh, obviously, I've been in tourism for over 35 years, uh, travel quite a bit, and that's what I do, like, uh, you know, book trips, packages. I still do that here, specializing on Pico. So that's always the first question. Why uh, you want to go to the Azores? Why do you think you want to go there? Uh, when I think of the Azores, uh, not only because I'm from here, and now I spend half the time here and in Canada, it's nature. The first word that really jumps out, it's nature. It's a wellness destination. Uh, I can tell you right now, there's not too many places on the planet like the Azores, okay? Um, some places, unfortunately, have been basically destroyed. This is not the case here. Hopefully it stays that way. But when you come here, uh, I already mentioned that it's one of the top whale watching places on the planet, okay? Because of the variety of, uh, you know, whales and dolphins and you turtles here. It's just, it's a sanctuary. It's a, you know, the fish, the snorkeling, there's diving, uh, hiking, these are all things that you can do. It's activities. There's some are more extreme. There's canyoning, kayaking, sailing. I mean, it can go on. You, know, you get a mix of, uh, I would say, three seasons here. Uh, you don't get snow really, maybe on top of Pico here, which is the highest altitude of Portugal. But other than that, you'll get some storms coming through here. But look at right now, I mean, we're in September. 
and the water's like 25 I think the guy told me yesterday I was swimming here I'm probably gonna go for a dip right after this and it's uh, unbelievably just refreshing but at the same time at the same time you feel the healthiness of the ocean the, the buoyancy of the salt the salt in the air like right now I'm smelling the salt and this is what you want to find and you do find these places in other destinations Hawaii comes to mind New Zealand Iceland obviously Iceland's kind of north but if you wanted to Madeira Canary Islands they're more south so that the temperatures even it'll be hotter in the summer here the temperatures 28 29 in the summer in the winter average 16 degrees we're talking on the plus side okay I live in Canada I've been there in the winter you can go below 30 in the winter plus 40 in the summer so you have those extremes here you do not have that and I think because of that you can do so much but doing nothing I'm telling you sometimes you just can't beat it you just sit back put the feet up grab a beer or your favorite drink coffee tea and just get mesmerized by this Atlantic Ocean which changes constantly with the colors and I call the Azorean blues which I just love to the rainbows I mean it's all here it's a peaceful place all the islands will offer you this all the islands have the coastal villages and then they have highlands where you can drive up and just it's like you're in a different country Ireland Scotland kind of feeling lakes and I think that a lot, if you want to do something if you just want to go for a picnic get in the car and drive 20 minutes from the coast you're having a picnic in a whole other environment so so much you can do there again there's YouTube channels that uh, talk a little bit more I think our YouTube channel keeps popping up because we do once a week you can go back and see some of our other ones that we show you things around the, this island we're here most of the time so this is our place but uh, there's videos by the tourist sports on the on all the islands okay and when we make it over to other islands like we have already Fayal St. George we filmed there as well peaceful tranquility safe secure uh, it's still affordable you got all the nature you got to just it's a place where it's just unique so you check a lot of those boxes while other destinations might check one or two and that's it all these islands uh, San Miguel being the biggest then Pico the island I'm on okay Pico I'll just give you an example it's at 440 square kilometers compares to Barbados in the, in the Caribbean which I've been uh, almost the same square kilometers the difference is Pico has 14,000 people okay Barbados 250,000 plus which is all of what's in the Azores San Miguel being the biggest island has half the population of the Azores it's a pretty big island so most of the population there is probably more to one of the sides where Ponta Delgada the city and the towns but in other islands you have all the space that's it it's open space like on Pico here which are more familiar with like I was just mentioned you can just drive even in the, in the high season, in the summer months, with the most of the tourists, you could be alone. So in the summer, you can line up more for, for meals, you know, there's more of that going on. But other than, as far as the land, that's one of the characters, one of the main positives of these islands is open spaces, accessibility to these open spaces, even by car, by hiking, by bicycle. These are things that are very attractive to people that want to be here and just having freedom of their own space. Lisbon is more expensive, cities within the country tend to be more expensive than they are, but in general Portugal is a pretty affordable place. Here being on Pico, I can still go out and have a beer, a nice beer for a buck or for a euro. I could have a coffee for a euro, I can have a good entree with top quality fish caught the same day for like anywhere from 12 to 15 euros, uh, some places even less because they have plates of the day. The wines and the uh, things you can buy at the grocery stores or even in, in the restaurants are very affordable. I'll go out and buy probably the wines here from the mainland which is there's lots of them anywhere from good wines let's say from 5 to 12 euros a bottle okay lots of choice you can get the local wines which is winning awards especially the white wines um, you can get a good bottle the other day I had one for 12 euros white wine a uh, gun just to put the name out there but there's so many okay they're winning awards it's a really unique area for grape growing uh, it's to do with the sea and the way the walls they put make these walls and again there's lots of footage on that where it keeps the, the kind of the, the grape the vine is into the lava let's say the Ezos was the most expensive place in Portugal let's just say having all this that I've mentioned so far for me it would be worth it to pay more okay to have it okay and I think uh, people come here they're like a bit shocked where you know the dollar or the euro wherever they're coming from goes further and I think that's attracting more tourists for that reason alone. But I'm pretty sure most of the people that come in contact with would pay more, for sure. If, if it happened to be at par with Germany or, or other places, the dollar, they would, they would pay more because you can't find this place. You can't find this kind of environment, this place in this special kind of area, too many places on the planet.
We love being here and the reasons why we love being here is all these what we've been talking about, what I've been putting those up there. So it should be the same reason why you decide if you want to visit, if this is the kind of place for you. Because I think this is the main reason why we wanted to do this video. Okay, I've been wanting to do this video. I've said these things in different types of videos, but a video takes a, a life of its own. You might only see this video, not the other 155. And I think, if, especially if you are considering uh, coming here, and if it's, it's the reason why you visit, these reasons, and you come here, and you say, yeah, Carlos is right. I mean, exactly what he's saying, I feel it. Because that's it, you gotta get this feeling of the islands, um, and it'll go further if you decide to then spend even more time, maybe come back, spend a month or two or three, or wind up retiring, or semi-retiring here. Those same reasons are, are the ones you're gonna have, right? That you're gonna wind up here, because that's what we want. I mean, the world's a crazy place. We all know that. We. I'm even afraid to look at the news, you know, I like to stay positive. We all have our struggles, we have our mechanisms, some deal with stuff better than others, but for me being in an environment, it helps me, right, and Laura. It helps, you can see where it allows you to breathe a little bit more. You're away from the rat race, because most of my life in Canada has been a rat race. I love Canada, so I'm so fortunate that I, I'm, I have two countries that I love, Canada and here, but I, I would have to say that this is a different type of environment. There are places uh, in other parts of Canada, Canada's very large, second largest, where you can find similar environment, the East Coast, maybe the Pacific, up north during Ontario, know that about it, and uh, I love those places as well. But I'm, I'm in it here with Laura. Um, we are, you know, like I'm just looking over here, there's someone just floating here on the water. That's what I'm gonna be doing in a few minutes. At any second, I just walked down from our, our home here, our family home, which is, by the way, it's 200 years old. I grew up here, I was nine when I left Canada and uh, still very uh, totally connected to here and uh, you can just walk down throw yourself in the water and just relax spend a day here right now i'm in, in the middle of this lava these are trenches these are i mean i feel the heat as i'm sitting i had to put a towel on it's kind of hot so you feel these nurturing minerals coming at you people that have been to hawaii i feel this as well so that's one way i've been there same volcanic uh, origin um, but I do feel fortunate that uh, I come from, I'm from here and I'm from Canada. And the time I spend here is very special. I feel privileged. Uh, so does Laura and I think everyone I've kind of come in contact with, new friends that I've met. People came through the channel that wind up buying here and now are retiring here. I feel the same way. And before I end the video, I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't come here. For example, if uh, you wanted to be in an area and, and then you would find these white, white sand beaches, which I've, I've been, Cuba's and uh, Mexico's, love those places, love to visit, I wouldn't live there, sorry Mexico, sorry Cuba, but I, I love visiting, I like beaches as well, there are no white sand beaches, there are some beaches in some of the islands more like the gold or black sand, but not like hundreds and thousands of beaches, no, that would be, uh, that. and at the end of the day, that's a protect, it protects the islands, okay, now the reason would be if you want to be constantly in, in 30 plus degrees Celsius temperatures, always hot. Like, you know, you go to areas that are not far from the equator, it's just always hot every day, 365 days of the year. I couldn't live in a place like that. I could visit, but I need to leave a week, two, two weeks there. I could not live. So Azores does not have that. Sometimes you can get three seasons in a day, I guarantee you. You know, you could have uh, all of a sudden it's sunny and then all of a sudden these cloud formations come in through the Atlantic rain heavy heavy rain waterfalls come out you might have a storm come through either in the summer kind of more like a uh, sometimes the hurricanes do make it up from the caribbean or in the winter you get the cyclone yeah, i've been here for some of those it's raw nature at its best uh so if you don't want to have any of that you gotta go somewhere else or if you just want that summer you don't want any anything else then i don't think these are for you if you just want city life Okay, someone wants to be, I know what they're feeling, right? Now I, I have cities close to me in Canada. I like, I love Lisbon. Okay, I love Portugal in general. I've been to Italy, you know, to Paris in, a, in France, Italy, Rome, I love it. I like to visit. I wouldn't want to live in it. Most of these islands don't have that environment. There's no nightclubs, there's no uh, big shopping malls. Now, the island of San Miguel being the biggest island, you're going to find more of that. Okay, they, are, they actually have a McDonald's there. You know, having said that, Pico actually is a Burger King. They put in a bigger grocery store here in Pico, and they actually they had a deal with Burger King, and there's a Burger King, which I found it kind of weird. Uh, I did go and test the burger, it was pretty good. They actually used the, the, the local meat. But if you want something like what like Lisbon would have, with a big Colombo mall, you can go shopping all day, 
You can then go out at night and go to the nightclubs and go to all these places. Uh, San Miguel might be the closest place. But uh, yeah, and most of the other islands will not have that. Okay, will not have it. And even, even San Miguel, Ponte del Gato, it's up to a certain point. Some people require their constant pounding and they want to go out. I've done a lot of that. I guess I'm at the stage where I don't need to do that. I don't mind doing it once in a while. But I don't want to live in an environment like that. So uh, if that's maybe you, the Asians may not be for you. So another reason, and it's very important for a lot of people, including us, the people you would come to the Azores, or in Portugal in general, but since we're talking about the Azores, it's, it's food. It's just, if you love seafood especially, but not just seafood, there's no fresher seafood. I mean, they catch it here one day, you're eating it in the afternoon or at night, they eat it in the morning, all types of fish. Oh, I'm not even gonna name them, <laughs> but it's a lot. Uh, people sometimes request from the fishermen what kind of fish do they want the next day. It's just incredible. And uh, again, it's still affordable. The quality is amazing. If you, a lot of grilled food, especially seafood. But aside from seafood and fish, you have the meat. Pico and the Azores beef, that's what they get up in the mainland. It's amazing, you know. Um, it's just a variety of that, very healthy, it's organic. If you like pork, go, I mean, I'm niching all these things because they do have it on the island. Uh, but primarily like chicken, if you like chicken, Laura loves chicken. She doesn't eat beef or pork. She's chicken and, and fish, seafood. But the quality, it's the chickens from here, the eggs are from here. Uh, fish is from just behind me here. If I dive in there and if I wanted to catch some fish, I can do it. Uh, spear fishing or fishing. Uh, so all these things are here. And that's the main reason why people sometimes fly in for the weekend, spend three, four days on Peak or one of the other islands. It's for the foods, uh, the culinary experience keeps on growing. They're obviously, there's traditional foods, but now people from outside are coming in and doing other things like sushi, uh, Middle Eastern food, Italian, and you'll find that throughout the islands. Now, if you do decide to visit the Azores, uh, obviously I'm in tourism and I'm more specializing in the slow and slow packages that you can put, we can put together with you know, one island, two islands, three or more. Even tying in Portugal, I work pretty much specifically with a company called Life Wellness Azores. Uh, the owner is called Egidio. We've been together, we did other videos. I try to put them, uh, link them up here. And he has, he's a wealth of information. He's originally from San Jorge and I'm from Pico. So we're, I would say we're pretty good specialists at these two islands. We're learning about the islands. He's already, he knows about all the islands and about the mainland as well. And uh, yeah, you just send us an email and just tell us if you want to visit. We would take care of you. We're trying to do this tourism a little bit different. Just taking it easy, taking time to book. We want to make sure that you, you are booking the right one. And I think doing this video, you will know before you go, we get here if, if it's for you. When you're here, it's way beyond. Anyways, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was good information for you. Uh, again, there's my email. You can contact me even through the, the YouTube channel. Feel free to send comments, like, subscribe. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. Thank you. And I'm going to leave you with a few images here of this beautiful place. I hope to see you here on the island or on one of the other islands. Okay, guys, take care.